I am recording this short video on the, I guess it must be the 30th of March 2019, uh, just to see how this camera performs really. Um, the microphone I'm assuming is in front of the camera, uh, so how well it's picking up my voice I have no idea. But I just wanted to do a quick tour of my mini camper, or perhaps it should be called a micro camper. And uh, this is where I've got to so far. This is the rear view. You can see it's got a fold up tailgate. The door is a three part door. Um, it opens like that, and then the bottom bit opens. And um, perhaps I'll show you the tailgate. So that's held on in place with a couple of bolts. So we drop the tailgate to Consa, and then we can, oh, we have to open the right hand door fully to open the main part of the door and that swings back and that will have a catch to hold it in place it doesn't have at the moment inside uh, as you can see there's still some details to be done uh, but the uh, there are side flaps both sides that fold out i can demonstrate whoa i shouldn't have stood on that because 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 there's a thing you have to do, which is to pull out these. Uh, now, first of all, you have to undo them underneath, and then that slides out like that. Then you do the same thing this side. Where's it gone? Here somewhere. There's a wheel under there, and then that pulls out. Then you can let that down. You should see that's on hinges. Once that's down on it stays it will take my weight quite happily so I can stand on it um, the side flaps this side are actually have gas struts so I just push so far and let go and it automatically opens and I do the same at the bottom here so I just push that out to there let go and there it goes so there's one opening uh, top and bottom this this is strong enough just to take, you know, cups of tea and stuff, uh, and maybe a, the light, a light bit of um, handwork, as it were. Um, but you wouldn't want to sit on it. So, gas struts, top and bottom. This this flap over here, which is going to be lined. They're both going to be lined with this um, sheet cork material. Uh, one of these days when I get around to that. Held in place with brass bolts, both sides. That just pushes out, it hasn't got gas struts yet. And it's held up on um, aluminium tubing props. <coughs> so, so there are openings for both sides. This is a Conway uh, trailer tent trailer that I've based it on and it's a very strong little trailer it's all galvanized underneath the, the uh, structure is galvanized and the, um, the trailer itself that is so and it's got loads of uh, storage in here for um, I don't know there'll be stuff there'll be batter a battery in there one of those days probably and maybe even heating who knows um, there was a set of drawers in there. They were really too, st they were too tight, really, to be practical. So I've taken the drawers out, and I shall use that space in another way. I haven't made any doors on the front of it yet, but I probably will. And so I've lined it. You can see this is quite a nice interior plywood, redwood face plywood that I've used. Um, for the side panels there. The front panel, uh, the sides of it still need trimming. I, I, I rather cut that rather badly, um, but I couldn't bear to do it again because it was a waste, potential waste of plywood. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna cheat and put some strips of wood over those sides to hide the, the gaps. This shelf here is gonna have a, um, this is just loose at the moment. It's gonna have a, uh, an edging piece along the front here to hold it. Um, well, two two reasons. One to hold it in uh, a nice straight line because it's a little bit bowed at the moment. 
but also to pr provide a, a, a retaining edge, as it were, and to tidy up this nasty exposed edge of plywood. Something similar will, be, will happen on the bottom shelf as well. That's a nice storage area there. A little bit of surface mould got managed to get on there over the winter, which is a bit annoying. Um, but I shall find a way of dealing with that before I seal everything up. Um, what else? Okay, so little shelves at the back here. Um, again, this one's not fitted properly yet. It's just resting in place, edged uh, to stop things falling off. And that's about it, I guess, for the entire. I have I have cut a piece of carpet. This is um, I'm standing on a piece that's kind of upside down and informal, but there is a rolled up carpet there which actually fits the floor, uh, which rolls out. So there we go. That's where we've got to. Um, the construction is well. Um, I hesitate to say that I invented it, but I kind of did. Um, it's fairly standard in terms of the frame. There's a timber frame, uh, mostly 2x1 two and 2x2, two two, um, to keep it light, because this is only a, I think it's a 400 kilo trailer, so I've got to keep it light. Um, and you can see the surface isn't great in places. It's a little bit uneven. The reason for that is that the construction method I used was to make a wooden frame and then fill the spaces in the frame as it were with Celotex with the, which is the urethane foam filled uh, insulating material with aluminium foil outers and what I've done there is I've used this is um, the surface is uh, weed suppressant material which is a synthetic fiber it's not a woven fiber exactly it's more of a it's more like a felted fiber but um, that's laid directly on top of the um, cellotex and then glued in place using um, some pretty strong glue it's a waterproof adhesive um, I can't remember the name of it at the moment but I might might find that um, uh, there's a, you see there's a little w bubble window at the front here which is to let light in obviously um, which is uh, an upturned um, mixing bowl uh, made of acrylic or perspex or something like that which I got, I don't know where I found that but uh, they're easy to come by and that's just held in place, that's just glued in place with silicone adhesive, a clear silicone uh, what else have we got? Oh yeah, we've got some opening uh, openings at the front here um, little drop down doors because there's a nice bit of storage space there. I, I, as you can see I extended the trailer forwards uh, by a couple of feet um, and that gives me the uh, potential for the uh, for the shaped front end which which, which came out okay. Um, it, the idea is to just deflect the, 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 the wind a bit, give it some semblance of aerodynamic quality and uh, also gives it a little bit of extra storage so in that space down there uh, that's probably if I decide to fit heating to this thing that's where the diesel heater is going to go but otherwise it's just kind of general storage space um, okay so what else the as you can see the side um, the, the, the woodwork along the side here I've actually treated with a, a blow lamp I've just scorched it slightly to bring out the grain and then oiled it and I've used oil rather than uh, varnish um, throughout. I forgot to mention the roof I've put um, you can see I've used the um, po uh, polycarbonate material that's used for greenhouse roofs uh, I've used that for the roof in here and initially I had a bit of trouble sealing it because there's two pieces edge to edge joint in the middle which isn't ideal but um, I've filled it with silicone and I'm hoping for the best. So here's the opening flap from the outside. Here's the outside view of it. You can see the, the top and the bottom. The top one is deliberately left slightly sloped. I'm, sl I'm exaggerating the slope now, but slightly sloped outwards to, so as to spill. You know, should it rain when this is open, then, then it will spill rainwater. 
um, obviously I guess you'd close it anyway if it was raining but um, yeah you can see this is the finish I've, I've chosen to use which is a blow lamp run over the pine and then oiled when I've done that kind of throughout as a theme you can see I've done it over there as well um, what else can I say the we can fold the the base up here and we can push the top down here. Now they stay in place just from the um, spring the, uh, the the not the spring it's a it's a pneumatic um, mechanism isn't it the, the gas strut so that holds them down but obviously there's bolts on the inside to secure them for travel you can see the um, the layout of the trailer it's very standard I can just put the camera underneath and maybe see a little bit more and uh, it's a very standard galvanized trailer but they're very good quality I must say these Conway trailers um, are excellent quality and that's why I chose it because uh, I looked around at, at various trailers to build something on too and I wasn't actually very impressed by the quality of a lot of them but this um, trailer tent came my way at a reasonable price and uh, so the uh, yeah obviously I've taken off all the trailer tent bits and pieces and I've made use of those in other ways elsewhere so that's what we've got right now and you can see I can close these doors there's a few fittings to come up on I mean I need to put some knobs and handles and things on these doors and I need some bolts and closure mechanisms and stuff like that um, one thing I'm not very happy about is the hinges I, I, I kind of messed up there because I was making this literally making this up as I went along I mean I, I did a little bit of you know sketching before I started but really not very much I just let it evolve and um, one of the penalties of that is that uh, somewhat lack of proper planning when it came to uh, hinge mechanisms and this door isn't ideal um, shall we say it's not as I would have preferred it I was hoping that I could actually um, embed the hinges properly and hide them or hide the the, the plates here uh, on the side of the door but I just could not find for the life of me find a hinge that was exactly the right shape so I've gone for these double um, what are they called double offset or double leg double bend um, offset hinges which do work well but they're well they're not pretty are they I mean if they've been brass or something then it might have been better but they're um, they're just ordinary steel I'm gonna have to do something to stop them rusting uh, I'm not sure quite what yet it might be just oil a smear of oil or grease or something or possibly I might even varnish them to try and retain the uh, the finish a bit um, or I could paint over them I suppose um, and I don't know what I haven't quite decided what I'm going to do with this door yet. My original plan for the door was to have um, windows in the top panels, and that didn't kind of work out because, well, I just decided that uh, to make the, the door in a different way. I decided to skin it with ply. That's actually um, that's actually a ply sandwich uh, filled with Celotex, so it, it's quite substantial. And it's it's as well insulated as the rest of the uh, as the rest of the van. So um, that's a pretty good door. Uh, it, <laughs> it, the fit could be better. You can probably see there's like a little crack down here. So I'm going to have to bodge that by putting probably extending the um, this edge outwards here with a, an extra piece and maybe putting some. Um, putting some uh, draft excluder or something in there but I, uh, yeah that's not ideal but you know um, I'm an amateur when it comes to to fitting doors and it took me quite a while to make this door and get everything right up you know as right about it as I could so I'm not too displeased with it um, the bottom edge the bottom six inches or so 150 mil is going to have a an aluminium um, what do they call diamond plate um, kick plate on it uh, to, to, to cover up, cover the bottom part of the door because that's going to get you know inevitably is going to get some some foot damage from time to time and also there's a there's actually a mark as you can see there's a floor in the, in the wood there which I couldn't um, work around due to the piece of 
timber that I was working with, so that will cover that up as well. But it, I think a, a diamond plate um, kick plate on the bottom of that door will finish it nicely anyway. Um, the hinges I've used for the tailgate are just uh, standard galvanised uh, like farm gate hinges, or not, not really quite farm gate, but heavy duty door hinges, shall we say. Um, the electrics are all standard trailer electrics, so I'm just going to drop the bolts. There's two bolts that hold this um, tailgate in place, they're a little bit on the tight side, I might need to drill those holes out a tad to make them fit better, but they're not bad. Okay, that holds that nice and securely. You can still open these little doors at the top, even with the tailgate down, uh, sorry, tailgate up. Um, there will be some sort of fastening here. I'm not really sure yet exactly what I'm going to put. Might put a nice little brass knob here somewhere to open the open the um, left hand door. Uh, we'll see. Right, the electrics, uh, standard trailer electrics. Um, just uh, I've 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 uh, positioned them uh, within the legal. Um, dimensions obviously that's quite important and the <coughs> you can see those legs support legs slide back in these are original um, this is original equipment on the Conway trailer and what hap what was on here originally was a a kind of lift off kitchen it's quite strange um, it was a long box which which travelled on the on the back of the trailer, attached to the back of the trailer. Um, it was the width of the trailer, and I don't know about, um, I suppose, 300 mil or so deep, something like that. And it was had, had its own set of legs, um, but it was incredibly heavy, and it would would it would require two people to lift. I mean, it was made from steel, and it it would would have accounted for. A substantial percentage of the total weight of the trailer I reckon it had um, uh, it, it, the idea was that you could lift it off I and mean, it would take two people to lift it so you'd have to I mean, forget you know solo tr camping <laughs> you'd have had to have uh, had to one person each side lifting the kitchen unit off the back of the trailer standing on its own legs separately and then obviously you do all your cooking and stuff outdoors, which is fine. But um, it was uh, it was a bit of a well. I decided I didn't need to use it, and, and it would have been a liability for my personal use anyway. So got rid of that. But the legs that used to support it are, are still there and still very useful. Uh, there's also um, a pair of um, drop down. Um, stabilizer legs here as well of course like that so that that those can be dropped to uh, to stabilize the trailer there's quite a lot of things here actually before you drive away in this thing there's quite a lot of things you need to check and that's one of them because obviously you don't want legs dropping down and dragging on the floor that would be a little bit disastrous um, so there's there's that to check there's the tailgate to check there's the well, I guess the spare wheel down there. I've got a, I've got a lock on it at the moment just to hold it in place. Um, that's to check. The doors would be to check. The side doors would be to, to check because, um, yeah, I have bolted them. Um, the, the obviously tire pressures as normal. It's got front stabilizers as well. You'd have to. You also need to check that these doors are closed. I've only got these little turnbuckles on them at the moment, and I don't know, that might not be adequate. I might have to do something better than that, because obviously, again, if that was to vibrate loose and that door was to open, well, actually, nothing really bad would happen um, unless there was something in there that, that could fly out um, or, the, or the door got caught on something uh, on the road surface, which would also be unpleasant. So, yeah, it's uh, th that might need a, that might need improvement. I don't know whether I'll bother putting a lock on it. I suppose I might put a lock on it if I put you know expensive batteries and things in there, but um, we'll see. And okay, I've got a I've got a little uh, yellow trailer lock on there, which I think is uh, 
probably sensible precaution. Um, let me see. These can close up. So that's now pretty much ready to go. Um, I would. Oh, I, I haven't actually. Yeah, I've not. I haven't bolted those, but they're they're pretty safe. But then again, you see, if that if that was to vibrate open and wind was to get under that gap. I don't know, that could fly out and then catch some passing vehicle going in the opposite direction. Not really an idea, really, is it? Not really a good idea, so that needs sorting. Um, I'm just going to hold this up and point it over the roof. You can see, well, it's got a flat roof, what more can I say? It's got um, both ends of the roof, either side of the uh, polycarbonate material, are just plywood um, coated, covered with the... Um, with the synthetic weed, weed suppression material and then painted with roof paint and I'm hoping that that will keep the water out. The, I did use some um, silicone sealant around the edge of this roof and it didn't really seem to stick very well, it, it kind of peeled off so I'm going to have to do that again with something better I think. Um, this little overhang at the back here uh, is obviously to keep, you know, to, so you've got a bit of extra shelter. So when, if it's raining when you come out, you've got that little bit of uh, shelter to, to keep you dry. And also when the tailgate's down, you can sit on the tailgate and you've got a little bit of maybe shade from the sun. So the interior still needs finishing. I've got to make a, uh, a kind of... Um, what's the word, um, futon style folding uh, bed into seat thing, uh, that's, that's going to be a project, um, so that it could be used as a seat during the day and then you can slide it down flat and use it as a, a bed at night. Of course, the, the <laughs> really, if you did that, the bed would fill the entire space uh, resting on, on the two sides. Um, let, me, let me point the camera inside so you can see what I'm talking about. There's, there's these two benches down the sides here. The idea is that the bed would, would sit or slide across uh, 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 down the length of that. So it, the futon would fold up to the far end as a seat for daytime use and then fold flat and extend for the full, full length of the trailer um, as a bed. So it's only a four foot, in fact, it's slightly less than four foot, it's 46 inches. Um, wide so it's like a it's not a full size um, double bed but it's you know for camping it's big enough I reckon and it just makes the the full use of the full width of the trailer I did consider why extending the width of it um, at that level so I, I did consider adding um, a few inches each side above the steel part this this bottom this is steel, okay, and um, I did consider extending the width a little bit each side, and yeah, I could have done that, and it would have made a, a wider bed, but really, for the amount of work involved and for the amount of extra weight, I decided it probably wasn't worthwhile to do it. Um, when I get around to the, there's the big trailer, still <laughs> in its frame, framing uh, uh, um, stage, so a lot, to work, a lot of work to be done on that, but that's the big four-wheeler which will uh, manifest in due course. Uh, meanwhile, there's odds and ends to do on this, but um, by and large, it's pretty much in its final shape. Um, and I'm going to road test it soon, probably not today. Um, I've, I've towed the trailer itself, of course, but I haven't towed it fully laden or with extra weight in because uh, the whole point of this vehicle really is that it's, dub it's going to double up as a transporter for my beehives and also a kind of little mobile workshop but um, and, I, and that's how it set up, that's how I started out that's that was my original intention was to make myself a little mobile workshop and, and, a, and a trailer for, for carrying my kit around um, and that's how it started. It was only like part way through. I thought, well, maybe this is big enough that you could just use it as a little camping trailer as well. 
because you know, I mean, there's there's plenty of space in the car as well. I, I, you know, I've, I'm, I've got a this is a, a Nissan um, X Trail, so there's a, a space in that as well. At least there would be if I hadn't filled it up with tools and junk in the back. But you know, if you were going away somewhere, that you could carry most of your luggage in the car, I reckon, and then you know, the the trailer itself would would still be quite light. I haven't put it on a way, way bridge, to be honest. I haven't done that. And I'm hoping that I've got plenty of um, slack here because the original kit that came with this trailer, including that heavy kitchen thing that I told you about that went on the back, but also um, a large um, canvas, large chunk of canvas and, and vinyl which which made up the tent itself and that that stuff's pretty heavy um and also the ironwork and the two bed bases which which were the, pretty much the size of the sides here which used to fold out to make the base of the um of the trailer tent so there was a lot of stuff that i've taken off that, that you know obviously you know just don't need to use with this so what I've put back, I'm hoping, is not too much in excess of that and may even be comparable with, with that. Um, the, uh, I forgot to mention the, the, the cedar um, la lapping that I used for the, for the rear end here, um, which, is, which is quite light actually, uh, doesn't have much weight and it just, I think, makes a nice kind of you know, rustic effect. Um, for the for the back end of the of the trailer, um, but I've used lightweight materials throughout the, the the sides. You know, it looks pretty solid, but in fact the sides are almost weightless. I mean, uh, the the Celotex hardly weighs anything. Um, I've used very thin plywood on the inside as a as a liner um, uh, for the for the walls, the interior walls. Um, so that doesn't add a huge amount of weight and um you know there's not there's not much else there that's that's that's, that's very heavy uh, the amount of timber i've added is not huge um it looks maybe it looks a little bit more kind of weighty than it really is um because i have really done my best to to save weight wherever possible so there it is there's my micro camper stroke workshop stroke um transporter thing and um i'm hoping to have some uh, adventures in it um and we'll see how it all works but i i, I quite like it it's quite cute isn't it